We have blinkers. How cool is that? So what I'm going to do now is do the wiring. Uh, I've taken the headlight off as you can see. I had a bit of a poke around in that wiring and I can't really find anything that's been frayed or really stiff. It all seems pretty good to me. So I'm going to try and keep as much of the original wiring as possible. I don't have a user manual. I've gotten to this far in the build and I haven't actually got a maintenance manual for this bike. So I ordered one. Uh, however, I did go online and I found the actual wiring diagram so I can sort of pinpoint what's what. Uh, I do have a test light, so I'm going to have a bit of a play around, try and figure everything out, uh, put labels on the things that I figure out what they are, and then go from there. So for this build, I decided to go this way. I grabbed this Speedo, and I'm pretty happy with the placement. It's off to one side. It sort of gives it that scrambler look. Uh, it doesn't have a taco. It's got all the lights in it that you kind of need, but obviously your high beam and your neutral uh, and your indicators. So that's really bare necessities of what you need. Uh, it's just mounted by the original bracket. I've just got two bolts holding that and it comes back to one of the mounting points on the top triple clamp. Still need to plug this into it. This is obviously the speedo cable uh, and I've got to figure out how to wire it up. So that's where I'm going to have to dive into this stuff. So if you're new to this build, this entire bike build started from how to build a scrambler on a budget challenge. Now I emphasize challenge because that's how it started. If I can stay within the $1,200 budget, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm getting towards the end of the build, obviously painting and things need to be completely pulled apart and redone. Uh, but I really want to make sure that I stay under that budget. I'm doing my best to stay under the budget. And I didn't think that a really fancy Speedo is really going to be something that I want to purchase. There are some things for this build that I want to buy. Well, I had to buy because I wanted to try and get that look that I'm after, which is expensive items like a battery. Uh, like this lithium battery here, but I just wanted to do it because I wanted to get everything tucked away under the seat here So this is a lithium battery uh, and that's the way I went I'll leave a link to that battery in the description if you want to purchase one I can keep the original regulator rectifier with that battery apparently uh, you don't have to change them out Don't quote me. I haven't actually started this bike and run it for a period of time and done any you know voltage checks But that's what I was advised. So at this stage I'm going to leave it like that. If I need a rec regulator rectifier, then I'll go down that road and figure it all out. But for now, until I finish all this wiring, that's where it's at. Uh, there's another bike there, which is not on a budget. Uh, and I'm figuring that one out as I go. And there's a new build over there. There's also another CX, which I'll be working on at some point as well. And uh, I've got a couple of friends who also have some builds, which I'll share in the future videos. Uh, I might actually do some feature videos on my channel with their builds. So what I've also got to figure out is where all this is going to go. Uh, obviously, I need to keep a few of the components, the starter solenoid. That's the flasher relay, I believe. Um, I've got obviously a fuse there. And also, this is just going down to obviously all the back end stuff, which is the blinkers or signals and the tail light. So I can run everything where it needs to be. Uh, these guys, these wires, I think I just tucked in under there so they've got to be plugged in as well so yeah I'm gonna figure it all out I'm gonna spend a little bit of time trying to figure it all out and then give you a bit of a rundown once it's all done so the regulator rectifier is mounted down here as you can see there's a few of the wires poking out of the top uh, that's its home I did an entire video on how to make that regulator rectifier uh, box and it's pretty much mounted uh, using the original mounting points which is really cool so I'll leave a link to that video for you to go and check out in the description. And also the rear brake uh, little signal wire needs to be mounted somewhere there. So last night, uh, what I did was pretty much temporarily ran all the wires to where I need to run them to see what is working and what isn't. Uh, I've got a tail light here. I still don't know if I'm going to run with this tail light, but that's the one that I'm just using for testing right now. 
Uh, I do have another taillight idea, so that will be another video coming out. Uh, but anyway, what I've done, like I said, is just pretty much run the wires. I've connected the original cluster just to try and, you know, eliminate any major problems that I might be having, if there is any. So what I've discovered so far is a couple of things. The first one is the signals turn on, but they don't flash. So this is the original flasher relay that I've taken out. I've got this one here. Uh, this is just a little eBay special. I actually had that sitting in the CB750 over there. Um, so I borrowed it from there just to see if that would solve the problem. It hasn't. I've still got to figure out something that's going on here. Uh, the wires are going into it. Not entirely sure what this wire is here. This was obviously, it's got to do something I'm sure, but I haven't figured that out. So that's something I'm working on next. The other thing is the brake. So this is the rear brake signal, uh, which will turn the brake on obviously. So it sits down here. It's not working. I've problem solved that just by obviously disconnecting it here and then touching the wires together and it turns the brake on. So, so I had a look online, like $1.70 or something. I don't know if these things are repairable. I don't even know if you can pull them apart. I'm sure you can, but I'll have a play around with that. But at least I know that uh, the taillight wiring is working. It's just that it needs to be fixed. And the other thing is up here uh, is obviously the wiring for uh, the actual front brake. And that's not working either. So I know this guy is faulty. Uh, the actual nut that holds it on is all busted as well, uh, which you can kind of see. So I figured rather than play with it, I'll call the motorcycle mechanic, see if he has anything in stock, because I'm sure this happens all the time, which he did. So I ended up grabbing one. It was only a couple of dollars. Comes with a brand new spring. I thought, well, why would I play with that for a couple of dollars? I'll just get a new one. Uh, and also what I got is a relay, which I'll show you in a minute, but also something equally as important is my coffee. Uh, this is just a little generic uh, LED relay, so I figured that I'd put an actual LED one on, considering these little lights that I'm running are LEDs. They look like they're not, but they actually are. Uh, that's kind of the idea. So what I did is I put that on, and as soon as I plug that in, we have blinkers. How cool is that? So if you remember the old handlebars that came off this, they were quite long. So obviously uh, this is gonna be way too long. I'm gonna have to shorten that. So I'll do it properly and obviously shorten it here uh, and then put that plug back on uh, as it is originally. I'll probably bring it up to here somewhere wherever I need it. Same on the other side. But for this guy here, this is obviously the plug to plug into all that stuff. I know what these guys are now, so I can just kind of work out what the original Honda stuff is and then connect it up. Oh man, only downside to having a driveway that's uh, on a slope. Ah <laughs> oh, dear. So how I splice the wires together is I twist them together like this, not excessively, but just a little bit, just to sort of get them all in one bunch. And then I cross them over enough so that they kind of, so I guess that they're like that, if you can imagine, so that they're the same distance apart. And then it's kind of a bit tricky to show you, but, and then I just wind them together like that. And the idea is to try and keep it the same thickness as the insulation. Uh, just purely because once you get that heat shrink and you slide that heat shrink down and over the top and heat it up, 
it'll pretty much stay the same thickness. So when you bunch them all together, you don't have a big chunky lump there. The other thing to mention is just to make sure you get rid of all of your like sharp little fray bits that's sticking out because if they are there, then they might poke out and actually touch the other wires if they poke through the insulation and then short out. That's the way I do it. There's a few ways to splice wires, but I find that's the easiest way for me. So now that I've got about four ready to go, I will actually solder these ones before I keep going because otherwise if I'm tugging on them, I will probably end up pulling these out before they get soldered. So there's different type of solder you can get. You can get ones with lead and ones without. I find the stuff with lead is usually a little bit easier to use. That's just my personal opinion. Just another little handy tip, if you've never done much wire stripping before, just don't use pliers. Uh, I've done a lot of this sort of stuff, so for me I've got a lot of control with a pair of pliers so I know that I'm not going to take out too many strands of wire. What I'd recommend is getting yourself a set of wire strippers like this, they're not that expensive. Actually I'll find a set on Amazon uh, similar to this and I'll put them in the link in the description below. But basically all you do is you work out how much wire you want to take off and it does it all for you and you don't have to worry about taking out strands of wire. So with all these little strands of wire here, I just want to explain that, you know, you might chop a few off and think it's not a real big deal, but if you've ever picked up an extension cord and it's gotten warm when it's been used, uh, what will happen is if you've taken out too many of these, then that's exactly what's going to happen in that join. The current's going to get to that point and it's going to heat up because it needs to get all that current to go through the wire. So therefore that could melt the insulation could touch a wire that's next to it or you could even burn your bike down so if you do take out too many of these little strands of wire just chop it back and just start again something that you might not know you might not think it's a big deal but it kind of it's worth taking the extra time just to try and get it right picked up this fairly inexpensive kit uh, and it's got the different size bullet connectors pretty much the same ones as the Honda has on it like I said I'm gonna try and keep as much of the original wiring as I can possibly on this bike uh, only for this build so these are the ones that I'm gonna use uh, they are the same size so I'm gonna pretty much take out I'll show you what I'm gonna do actually so for the actual indicators you've got these two little guys here they are obviously the little plastic covers that go around them. they've got two female bullet connectors on the inside one is for these two here, so the orange and the blue here, and the other two are going to be for the positive side of either side of these two blinkers. So what I'm going to do is change out whoop, this one here, the yellow one, I'm going to change out this for the right size Honda uh, bullet, plug one in there, plug the other one into there, like I said, keeping the original wiring, and then I just need to find a home for the negative for this, which will probably be this little green guy here. So I'll have two little ports in there, which will be the female connector for the males on each side of the front indicators. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, just, I'm gonna put that together now, and that way the indicators all pretty much wired up. I've still gotta pretty much find home for most of this wiring, which I've tidied up. Yeah, hopefully it'll tuck in most of it in the back of the headlight, but you're not gonna see too much of it because it'll be behind the headlight anyway. I find the easiest way to use these little bullet connectors is to actually get your little long nose pliers and just bend uh, this section here down, just bend it in a little bit so that when you get the wire, you can just push it in and it doesn't want to fall out like this constantly. So here's one I've just done, I've just, just to show you what I mean. You just bend them in ever so slightly, like so, just so that when you put the wire on, it sort of stays there for you. And then you can just grab your pliers and just push it down the rest of the way. So I've already tinned the wire itself. Uh, so then all I need to do is grab a soldering iron and just make sure it bonds really well to 
the actual bullet connector itself. I don't have to do this, but I think it's necessary. That's the way I do it. It's probably another way, but I find that simple. You can see there the actual uh, little bit of heat shrink was just a little bit too close and it started to shrink out on me. It's only just done on the end, so all I'll do is I'll just chop that bit off. So all I've got left is uh, the horn, which I think I've got to hunt around for that somewhere, the original one. I got this guy here to put somewhere. I think that's the voltage regulator. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I'll look into that one. Uh, I don't have a temperature sensor uh, in this gauge. So if anyone has any ideas on a cheap temperature sensor so that I can keep an eye on in case it gets to a certain temp, please let me know, that would be awesome. So up there, there's a box labeled CX stock parts. I'm gonna go and climb up there and see if I can find that horn. Ow. Ah, we have a horn. So that's pretty much the stock horn. It's not pretty, uh, but it's got a bracket and stuff. I don't know, we'll plug it in and see if it works. Oh man, nothing. Wonder if it's the wiring or the horn. Let's find out. So process of elimination, just got a couple of wires and it's just attached them to the back. We'll check the horn first. If that works, then we know it's the wiring. And if it doesn't work, then we know that the horn doesn't work. And it could potentially just be the horn. It'd be pretty cool if that was the case. Nothing. And nothing. Okay, I don't know much about horns, but I know this one's not working. So I'm pretty sure they're not expensive. I'll hunt around, see if I can find an old one. I may still have one off the CB750 build. So I just had a bit of a poke around in some of the parts that I had, and this is the original CB750 uh, set of horns. So I'll just plug them in, see if I can get, just for argument's sake, to see if I can get a horn to work on this. Okay, so we have a horn. So we know that that works. So what I might do is I might uh, repurpose uh, this old horn, the CB750 horn, and just make a mounting bracket to stick it on there. I'll put the headlight on so I know where this can be sort of tucked in and hidden away. I'm gonna try and avoid putting it right there. It may have to, I don't know, I'm looking at some horn options, um, but for now I'm thinking about putting it sort of hidden away back here. It's still there, but it will be sort of tucked away behind everything so you won't just necessarily see a big horn sitting there like that. So just to try and keep it neat, it doesn't really matter, but uh, so that's that. So a few things that uh, I've done so far is I've tucked the wires up inside that bucket. They all fit. I wish I left them just a tad longer, but they do fit, so I'm happy with that. Uh, this guy here, the actual cable needs to stay straight and where it is located right now, I can't get that bracket to move any further than where it is. This cable needs to stay straight, so I'm gonna tuck it up behind here, which means I'll need to make a new bracket for this guy. Uh, not use the existing one. What a shame, an excuse to make another bracket. Uh, I'm kind of looking forward to that. I'm gonna try and make this go up and then in, and then it'll dodge that as well. So that's something I've got to do. Just a couple more things I need, I need to do up front, but for now, I think I'll leave it just to let you know what they are. I need to tuck in the brake line just to see if I can get away with leaving it that length. I don't really want to chop it and shorten it if I don't have to. If I was to do that, I would really want to put braided lines on, but this budget for this build is uh, probably not going to allow that. So the other thing I need to do is shorten the uh, clutch cable. That's ridiculously long. So I need to shorten that and the choke cable needs to be mounted. But I've got the original mounting just here for that little guy. So hopefully uh, I can reuse that. Now that's about it. But what I want to do now is dive into this stuff because this is really the meat in the wiring that needs to get sorted out.